Ahoy, all of you flick freaks out there. What is going on? My name is Andrew, and we are here with another E3 2016 press conference. This is going to be the Ubisoft press conference coming hot off the heels of Xbox and Microsoft press conference, which blew it out of the fucking water. That was such an amazing conference. Personally, my favorite so far of this E3. And uh, yeah, as you guys know, I'm a huge Xbox guy, so... Fanboy bias, keep that in mind whenever I give my final review of E3 2016. Now though, let's talk about Ubisoft and some predictions of what we can see in this show. Predictions I have, they are going to end the show possibly with a teaser trailer for the new Assassin's Creed coming out next year. That's one. We're also going to see a crap ton of gameplay for Wildlands as well as some upcoming DLC for The Division. Probably not going to show too much of The Division because they don't want to confuse one Tom Clancy game and another Tom Clancy game. And for all I know, they may be even throwing in some Tom Clancy Rainbow Six Siege DLC. Um, we need to see some gameplay for South Park The Fractured Butthole. That is a given and something we must see. Also going to see some more from For Honor and um, Ubisoft. Oh, of course. Watch Dogs 2. We're going to see some Watch Dogs 2. Aisha Tyler is going to make some really funny jokes. I don't think that we're going to see any Far Cry unless, unless we get a standalone full Blood Dragon game, which would be totally awesome. So, uh, looking over here, do I have any more Ubisoft? Because I have them all jumbled up. I should have probably made this a little more coherent for myself. Uh, nope, it looks like that's all the Ubisoft predictions that I have, and I'm sure as the show will go on, I can just splurt some of them if they haven't already, you know, given us anything. If they do any dance stuff, like the Ubisoft dance game, I'll probably check out during that, and I'll go get a drink from the fridge. But uh, other than that, I think we are ready to kick this thing into fourth gear. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado... The 2016 E3 press conference for Ubisoft. Here we go. There she is. What up, Aisha? Now, some people don't like her as E3's host. I think she's the best. I love Aisha Tyler. Lana. Hey, everybody. Lana. Thank you. Wow. Lana. Oh, my God. You guys are awesome. Danger zone. You guys are awesome. You guys were confusing and awesome. And uh, my mom has those boots, by the way. She wants them back. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know when you see a dancing crab and a baby bird with a paper collar that you could only be at the Ubisoft E3 Just press dance. conference. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, dancers, can you guys bring it in behind me for a second? Just gather around. Get behind me here. It's a special year. And uh, I want to take a moment to do something that's going to feel a little uh, incongruous and potentially even uncomfortable for some of you. There's no smooth or easy way to do this, but we all felt really strongly when we were rehearsing today that we needed to say this. So before we start, everyone here at Ubisoft want to offer our deepest sympathies to the people affected by this weekend's tragedy in Orlando. Yes. Our hearts, the hearts of everyone in Paris, in France, in the United States and around the world are with you. And now, thanks guys. Uh, and now with a human giraffe on my right and a candy cane on my left, I'm gonna make a very hard right turn and get into the fun stuff. Thanks for coming on guys, dance away, dance away. The madness that you just saw was courtesy of the Movement Wizards at Just Dance 2017. Just Dance has always been at the forefront of innovation, bringing its experience to new devices and also introducing the world to the first dance on demand streaming service with Just Dance Unlimited. And today, Ubisoft is pleased to announce that Just Dance 2017 will be coming to all video game platforms and PC in October and to the Nintendo NX next year. Uh, yes. Oh, it's going to the NX. Interesting. Your life is not complete. Uh, kind of 
And Makes so you sense. have a lion singing at it. you out of your television screen. Hello and welcome to everybody lucky enough to be sitting here in this theater and even luckier enough to be watching at home around the globe because you have snacks and you probably didn't shower today. I am Aisha Tyler. Some I of you showered. probably didn't shower either. There's no judgment here. I am Aisha Tyler and I'm standing in the historic Orpheum Theater in vaguely beautiful yet faintly urine scented downtown Los Angeles. It's true, right? It's, it's, it's underneath everything. And the badges are on everyone's necks and the smiles on everyone's faces can only mean one thing, it is E3 conference time. Now, 2016 is a huge year for everyone here at Ubisoft. It's my fifth time hosting this conference. Yay. Yes. Uh, and you all know what the traditional gift is for a fifth anniversary, yeah? That's right, my friends, wood. <laughs> or girl wood if you choose, let it wash over you. Now people watch, they always ask me like, why do I continue to do this conference in the face of the overwhelming internet love that I receive? I like you, Aisha Tyler. Uh, and it's not the money, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Ubisoft is French. <laughs> They're paying in red wine and sarcasm, you guys. <laughs> now, I come back every year because I love games. I play these games, I adore them, and I love being a part of the excitement that comes with revealing new games to the world. Every day, every year when I do this, I'm like a kid in a candy store, a really large, slightly masculine kid in a candy store. And speaking of excitement, it's Ubisoft's 30th birthday. Yeah. Yeah, give it up for Ubi. Or Ubi. Um, UV may be 30, but like everyone else here in Hollywood, it hasn't aged a bit. Uh, it gets drunk on weekdays and dresses inappropriately, but whatever makes it feel young. Now, over these three decades, Ubisoft has been flexing its creative muscles, giving its teams the freedom to push boundaries and create games that are memorable, fun, and sometimes a little crazy. So, enough talk. We're going to hit fast forward right now and get straight to the games. All right? Now, you may remember our next title from the end of last year's show. Wildlands. When it blew your fucking mind. And if you're at home playing a drinking game, yes, an F-bomb in the first five minutes of this show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ghost Recon Wildlands. Is this gonna be the McConaughey trailer? I called the We Are Ghost trailer the McConaughey trailer because the guy doing the over voice just had it. for the people a choice. Nope, not him. To follow me or oppose me. If you follow me, I feed your families, give you shelter, medicine, and jobs, shield you from the tyrants. La Santa Muerte to protect you from death. I give you power. I make you rich. But most of all, I let you rule like kings. But for those that oppose me, I have only one thing to offer. A promise. Look like a living moon and destroy it in front of your eyes. Damn. Ghost, 
hit the money, hit the drugs, then hit the king. In Bolivia, the coca leaf is core to the culture. It's found in every gas station, every hospital, and every town square. And they use it for a variety of things, like treating nausea and altitude sickness, to a refreshing energy drink. But it can also be used to make cocaine. So we asked, what if? I swear I thought I heard somebody go, woo! A Mexican drug cartel moved in took over the entire country, seized all of those coca resources to become the number one producer of cocaine on the planet, effectively turning Bolivia into a narco state. This is the world of Ghost Recon Wildlands. And you, well, you're the ghosts. The elite spec ops drop deep behind enemy lines to create chaos and disrupt the alliance between a corrupt local government and the Santa Blanca cartel, ultimately going after their leader, the vicious El Sueño. Hi, everybody. My name is Dominic Butler. Yeah, I'm, I'm on game board. Designer for Ghost Recon Wildlands. <laughs> a Ghost Recon Wildlands is the very first military shooter set in a massive dangerous open world that you can play entirely in solo or in up to four-player co-op with beautiful environments set across a variety of different ecosystems that will challenge and influence your gameplay at every step of the way. All of this takes place in the largest action-adventure open world Ubisoft has ever done. Now, in the gameplay we're about to show you, the ghosts already have a target. His name is El Pozzolero. He's known as the stew maker because he makes the bodies disappear. Yeah. Now the ghosts know that their target is in a large Santa Blanca camp somewhere in the San Mateo province, but they don't know where yet exactly. And because Ghost Recon Wildlands gives you the total freedom of choice to do what you want, when you want, we put the power back in the player's hands to achieve their objectives their way. In this case, the ghosts know that their target has some vital intel. They want to take him alive, so they've opted for a tactical extraction. Let's go get that intel. Let's do it. Here we go. The intel we need is supposed to be in this Sicario's house. Looks like it's upstairs. Copy that. Need any help? Nah, I got this. Okay, I'll take a look around. Right, let's try to keep it stealthy. I also like how when you shoot one, it takes it a second for the other one to actually start alerting. Wasn't there a guy to his left there? I'm in. Oh shit, I've been spotted. You good? Yep, got it. Just moving upstairs. Alright, let's see what we got. Okay, I got the intel on El Pozolero. He's in a camp up in San Mateo. Cool, how far is it? We well, could use a ride. You got a car out there? No, something better. You ready to fly? Let's go. You got it. That's cool. According God, the intel, this, the camp this game is this gorgeous. Look at that. He's a high value target. He's going to be well protected. There's a camp. Oh, damn, this one's going to be tough. Yeah, we could definitely use some backup on this one. Hey, you guys need a hand? Right on time. We're going after El Pozolero. We're at the east of the San Mateo base. Got it. We are on our way.
We're approaching the camp from the west. We'll meet you there. Copy that. I hear this El Pozolero guy is supposed to be a hard target. How bad does it look? See for yourself. Oh, damn. Looks like a whole lot of trouble. Yeah. Take a look at him. Can you get him? This is Roger like One my game. About. Okay, we're splitting up. Weaver, can you get to a good sniper position on the south side of the camp? No problem. Alrighty, I'm moving in from the other side. Copy that. We're moving in from the train station at the east end of camp. It's up. Enemy spotted. I got eyes on a sniper. Wait for my signal. Got it. Now, tango down. Let's move. Okay, wait a minute. I hear something inside. Two guys. I got the one on the right. You ready? Ready. Go. Good job. Okay, I'm gonna deploy the drone and see what's up ahead. Looks like an old town that Santa Blanca's turned into a base. Wow. Oh, man, there are guards all over the place. That bad? Yep, be careful. One down, so far so good. Found my way in, guys. All right, let's see what's in this big building. Okay, I got him. Red gloves, gas mask. He's got guards with him. Got it. And another one down. I'm moving through. Gotcha. Okay, I'm close to the building. I'm trying to find a way in. You saw anything else? Oh, man, I think he was dissolving somebody. Like in a can of acid or something. Yeah, looked pretty nasty. God, I want this game really oh, bad. It looks smooth. really good. It's probably going to get delayed 15 right, times, right. but... I, think I found my spot. Nearly there. Like the division. Careful, there's more of them the closer you get. Whew. Only one left. Okay, I'm in position. I have three tangos in front of me. Weaver, you think you can help? I got it. Going in. Don't let this guy get away. I see him. We'll talk about nightmare fuel. Call us if you need us. Don't worry, man. I got this. <laughs> Shit! He spotted me. Guys, I'm spotted. The Pozzolero's running. I'm going after him. Oh, of course he is. Where is he? Where is he? Get out of the way, man. Okay, he's in a white SUV heading for the east end of the camp. Following on a bike. I'm moving to intercept. This camp's on full alert, guys. We need to get out of here fast. Shit, hold on, get in the car. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Shit, no, he's moving too fast. He went the other way. Come on, man. Let's go. Let's go. Hurry up. The gate's closing. I am right behind you. Weaver, are you okay? I'm good. Frag out. I'm pulling out. Down a bike, guys. I'm on my way. Hey, watch your fire. We need him alive. I can't get a good shot. This guy's all over the place. Stop moving. Okay, guys. I'm clear. Out of the camp, on the road. Where are you guys? Let me know you're... <laughs> Damn, the whole place is going up. All right, I'm heading for the chopper now. Damn, he's trying to ram the car. I gotta hit his engine. No, I'm trying to slow him down. Help us on the way, guys. I'll run this train. Where's the chopper? Where is it? I found it. Okay, getting in. I'm in the chopper. Coming your way. All right, I'm on my way, guys. Hang tight. 
Oh, no, 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 he's not stopping. Oh, man, come on, come on. I'm trying. Shoot the tires. He's a tough one, this guy, huh? Oh. No, 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 we're not going to push him off. Looks like he's losing control. Can you push him to the side? I don't know how it looks up there, but that's what I'm trying to do. Oh. Damn it, he dodged it. Hang on, guys. I'm nearly there. Oh, damn it. Okay, I got him, I got him, I got him. Yes, he stopped. I'll get him. Be careful. That was awesome. Here. How'd you get, buddy? Hurry up, we got cartel reinforcements incoming. Up you get, and in you go. Adios. Let's get the hell out of here. I got him in my line of fire. Well, hold him off. I gotta fly this thing. Man. We are clear, gentlemen. Nice work. That was a tough mission. Oh, man, that was close. Yeah. I'll be buying that one. Head over to GhostRecon.com right now for all the latest news and gameplay videos. For those of you here at E3, please come by the booth. We've got four-player co-op demos, and we would love for you to try it. We want to get your feedback. Ghost Recon Wildlands will be released on March 7th, 2017. Next year. Thank you. Have a great show. Crime in the United States is escalating at an alarming pace. The statistics are staggering. Urban centers are oversaturated with violence. And the wave of criminal activity has overflowed to suburban and rural areas. Dissolution of moral structure, international conspiracies, a multi-billion dollar drug trade. No one knows the source, and authorities are helpless in stopping this epidemic of crime. Civilization is being pushed to the brink. To stem the rising tide of violence and re-establish order, extreme steps must be taken. The question becomes... Who will take them? Yeah! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'm Matt Stone, Trey Parker. No, okay. I'm Jason Schroeder from Ubisoft San Francisco. Uh, I had the team put together a trailer. We just took some stuff from Snowdrop and said, make cool trailer, and it, that's what it puts out. So that's kind of the way that goes. Uh, but all that chaos, all that scary stuff is totally true. Uh, thankfully, the coon is up to the occasion. And who better to defend the town of South Park and really Colorado and really the world than superheroes or kids in superhero costumes? So, like the coon, I need some help from some friends. Please welcome Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Yeah! Are they still going to comment on how much they hate those microphones? Couch. Yeah. This is sweet. Ah, I had it brought in. Can sit down. Ah, no, no, it was an exhausting walk all the way through. Oh, they got new mics now. So uh, let's talk about the story. Everybody wants to know what's going on in the fractured butt hole. Don't know yet. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty soon. Uh, well, it really it, 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 uh, it, it picks up where the stick of truth like, kind of left off. You're the new kid. If you play stick of truth, you would know that. And that you're the new kid who moved to South Park. And um, so the, the, the game's really about who you are, and you kind of define who you are in South Park. But whereas The Sickest Truth was like a fantasy send up, and you end up being the king in the end. And um, the, it's like the next day in South Park, and the kids have sort of switched up, and now they're playing superheroes. Right. Right? Yeah. And so we, we actually have a backstory that the kids have been playing superhero, but they've been, they got into a big fight about something, so they're in the Civil War. Yeah. Part of their kind of civil right. war. Um, and in fact, Marvel wanted to call their movie Captain America: The Fractured Butt Hole, but we had already taken that name, so they had to they had to call their civil war. <laughs> lucky, lucky. 
true. It's very, a true story. That's true. extremely true. But also, um, you know, we, we want to get into who you are as this new kid and the fact that, you know, in, in Stick of Truth, you really rose to being cool because you became king. But in this game, they've kind of switched games, and so you're back to being a douchebag again. Right. So let, let's see how that douchebag was able to make it into Kunun Prince. Real gameplay. Dude, what the fuck? Who let this ordinary citizen into the Kunun lair? Uh, listen, bro, we are all superheroes, and you aren't, so you can't hang out with us. Please do us all a solid and fuck up. can blow up the entire Milky Way galaxy. Jesus, fuck! Mom! The new kid is trying to play with the cube of ultimate destruction! You be nice to all your friends, Eric. Be a good sharer. Good sharer? It'll blow up the fucking galaxy! You stupid bitch! Look, dude, we already told you, you can't play. You aren't a superhero. You don't have a costume. You don't have any superpowers. Freedom Pals are adding people to their franchise. We should be adding people to ours. This dork? Like, wearing a little crown? Does this look like a superhero to you? All right, all right, have a seat, douchebag. Not there. That's Mysterion's seat. Not there either, stupid. All right, in order to play superheroes, you have to have a superhero persona. Then you can fill out your character sheet on Koonstagram. Do you have a Koonstagram page? Oh boy, you're not even on Koonstagram, huh? I well, want I, I want Instagram to be a real thing. So the first thing we need to fill out on your character sheet is your class. You know, what kind of superhero are you? Beaster. Ah uh, yes, like the flash or quicksilver. I like it. Yes. Wow. Ooh. That's what I'm thinking. Sure. Sure. Wow. It was really important to us to be able to, and you guys, to be able to really create your own superhero. So that you saw on that UI that there are a dozen different superhero classes you can choose from. You mix and match powers from those classes and really make a superhero all your own. But what else is new in the Fractured But Whole? Um, well, I mean, that's obviously... <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> Just like uh, I mean, it's definitely more of a... There's definitely more of defining your character and kind of... In superhero movies, there's always like the intense emotional center that like motivates why you have to go out and fight crime so it's a much as you can already tell it's a much more spiritual it's more spiritual it's more spiritual game it's right. much more about it's like there's a, that's the, you know, you know there, there's part. actually a part of it that i'm really proud of where um there's a there's a gay fish in south park and he loves fish sticks and um the gay fish actually um wants you to help him get his mother into heaven and um, so you get to journey up and try to help this little gay fish get his mom into heaven. And you're all acting like this shit's regular. <laughs> shit is hard. This shit is hard. It was hard. <laughs> that was hard. I hope you all saw the Kanye thing. <laughs> if you didn't see the Kanye thing, that won't make it. <laughs> so, but, but you know, also, we, we, you know, Cartman's the one who's kind of in charge of telling each superhero what their tragic backstory was that right. made them made them a superhero and so this is what he comes up with for Claire. Right, let's see it. Who let this guy join us anyway? Go easy on him, you guys. He's had a tough life, and it's time they learned your tragic backstory. You lay awake that night, like so many other nights. You couldn't sleep because you knew you weren't like the other kids. You walked to the mirror. You looked in the mirror and you felt alone. And that's when it happened. A loud noise. You swore you could hear your mother calling for help. You left your room. <laughs> you left your room. <laughs> Seriously, dude, just walk through the door already. But then you finally reached your parents' door. And what you saw when you opened that door changed your life forever and led you to fighting crime. You were too late, because when you opened that door, you saw, you saw your dad fuck your mom. What? Butthole doesn't trust anyone because his dad fucked his mom and he couldn't do anything to stop it. That doesn't make any sense. I know. How could the person you trust do that to the only other person you love? <laughs> Cousin, everyone's dad fucked everyone's mom. Huh? That's how it works, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> fucked our moms. Oh, right. So 
So does that mean your dad fucked your mom, Cam? Huh? Yes! My dad fucked my mom! That's why I'm here! Don't steal his backstory, dude. That's not cool. <laughs> I can see. I can see. There's a lot of people that relate to that story. Yeah, it's very right. personal for us, and apparently that does yeah. we'll touch a lot of people. <laughs> there's very few people that can at least relate to it at some level, except for Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> we got that one out. Uh, so, it's pretty brutal. We've uh, got another thing in South Park that's brutal: our combat, and we worked on that a lot together. Yeah, the combat system is. Much improved from Stick of Truth, and it's superhero. It's a superhero game, so it has the combat is definitely the center. Yeah, center we actually piece had, it was actually pretty cool because we, uh, us and the guys from Ubisoft, we'd come down and talk about what this game would be, and we we'd go back to my house afterwards and play board games. I'm a big board gamer, so we'd play all like my favorite board games and tabletop miniature type of games, and figure out how to you know we didn't we still wanted to keep some of the turn based stuff because it it really makes it easier to do story, and so um, so we just tried to do a big. 4.0 version of Stick of Truth. Right. I mean, the, all of those sessions, it's a lot of very, real clarity that comes from that. So what we ended up putting in is the combat space and time. So let's talk about it. First, let's talk about space. You're not restricted to a location anymore. Now you can move to get into tactical positions on your enemies. Ooh. <laughs> you can also move to get behind cover. You can push and pull enemies, but they can also do it to you. Ugh. You can knock them into props and get a little extra damage. You can knock them into other characters and get an extra attack. Nice. You can use some of your powers like Tweak here to get over obstacles. So obviously using space makes a big difference. You don't know me. Yes! Totally real. Next up is time. In the first game, your farts were legendary. Now your farts are so powerful that you can use them to rip the fabric of time itself. Like Ghost Recon. <laughs> to rearrange the turn order. Mastering space and time makes a huge difference. I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it. Let's bring it out with big volume. <laughs> is this going to be the greatest game of all time? The answer is yes. <laughs> it's loud, too. Yeah. It's a loud game. Yeah. So uh, then we did all that, and now we do the business part. The business part? Oh, yeah. awesome. What's that part? <laughs> it's obviously been an amazing game for us to work on, and I think both of our teams have been having a ton of fun. And we're almost done, and now we have some exciting news, news for our date? South Park fans before we go. Anyone who buys the Fractured Butt Hole will get the Stick of Truth for PS4, Xbox One, and Steam for free. Nice! If you pre-purchase the game today... Pre purchase the game today, Fractured But Whole, that is, and you can start playing Stick of Truth right away. So check out our website and for information and about our participating retailers. Very nice. Right? Yep. Cool. Sounds great. You don't want to So do we made a trailer if you want to see it. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sort of shows what the boys are fighting about that was the Civil War Fractured But Whole part of it. People yeah. want to know the re release date, probably, too. Oh, yeah. yeah what, what do you think the release date? Uh, I'm putting my money on December 6th. <laughs> 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 the Fracture Bill Hole will be released on December 6th. <laughs> I wish it was like September or November, but at least it's this year, you know? So. Alright, let's check out this trailer. Why did we choose this life? Why did we become superheroes? We dedicate our lives to fighting crime for one reason to make a billion dollars on a superhero franchise. Now let's go through the plan one more time. First, we start with the Coon movie. Then we do the Super Craig movie. Then Super Craig and Coon will join forces in the Human Kite movie just as we start ramping up Kenny's Netflix series. How come I have to have the Netflix series? I want a movie too. You have a movie, Mysterion. You're in the third Coon and Friends United movie after your Netflix series. Yeah, but he's saying he doesn't ever get his own movie. Do I get my own movie? Not everyone gets their own movie. This franchise plan sucks. 
If we want to make billions of dollars, then I think we should start with a Tupperware movie. Right, start with a black superhero. Marvel is making a black superhero movie. Yeah, now! They waited years to get to that! We follow their plan, we do all the real people first, and we sneak the black guy in in phase three! <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit! All of us, like, all the time. But then we're just rehashing the same old material! There's nothing wrong with doing the exact same movie to start a franchise! Okay, J.J. Abrams. Okay, oh, okay, so you're on Cartman's side? Damn. He just likes this plan because he gets two movies in phase one. God! We have to just go with this plan! We don't even have one movie yet! How did it get to this? How did we grow so far apart? You go with the plan. Maybe we'll just go and do our own franchise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you want Civil War? Is that what you want? Yeah, dude. It's Civil War. Fuck you. Oh, fu oh, fuck you. Get out of my house. We'll make way more money on our franchise. Go ahead. I bet you don't even get halfway through phase one on your franchise, DC Comics. Shit. I thought Civil War wasn't supposed to happen until phase three. Shut up, Super Craig. Oh man. A fractured butthole. You wanna have to do this, but you leave me no choice. Did I just hear someone use a mic? PC principal! <laughs> PC principal! If you have been playing that drinking game at home, you probably fell asleep on your computer. And now we move from the flatulent, prepubescent superheroes of South Park to the snowy post-pandemic streets of New York in Tom Clancy's The Division. Uh, I can Thanks go grab a drink. I don't care there, about The Division. The Division broke records when it launched earlier this year, and today more than 10 million of you have spent up to three hours a day hitting a steady supply of high-value targets and trying to get your hands on the best loot in the dark zone. Well, here to tell us more about what's new in the division, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Julian Garrity, creative director from Massive Entertainment. All right. Thank you, and thank you for wearing those shoes. I like I'm, to make everybody I'm not feel... actually that short. No, no, you're, you're actually taller than me without these shoes on. I'm sorry. I'll go with it. <laughs> And thanks to all the Division players out there who are so passionate about our game. Yeah. It's a cool, cool-ass game. And you guys have been adding all kinds of new stuff to the game since it debuted. We heard uh, just a little while ago about the Underground, so do you want to tell us more about what's going on with Absolutely. that? Absolutely. So, in Underground, you and your team will be fighting against a dangerous threat hidden beneath the streets of New York City. And every time you play, the challenge is unique. That means endless replayability, and even better rewards the further you go. Okay, so, I mean, one of the coolest things about this game is it is open world, it is so robust, and you're making it more robust all the time. So are you gonna tell us when we're gonna get this new content, or do I just have to start taking bets? <laughs> I know, okay. I'm big and I'm also right. pushy. Yes. I agree. Underground will be out June 28th on Xbox One and PC, and uh, August 2nd on PS4. And this is just one of the updates we'll be releasing this year. Because for the Division team, this is a long-term commitment. We love this world, you love this world, and we're gonna keep on making it better for you. That's awesome. I, I mean, you know I've been in love with this game since you guys first uh, debuted. If you're out there and you like the Division more power to you, you just did really not really grab me at all. Cool. And that's not the only thing we're going to tell you about today. Mm -hmm. We've got a little surprise for you. To celebrate Ubisoft's 30th birthday, we're giving our fans three exclusive outfits to use in game. Ghost Recon, Rainbow Six, and Splinter Cell. <laughs> oh, Splinter Cell. Awesome. Very cool. You get an outfit. You get an outfit. <laughs> Chad, you get the three outfits. Good for you, Chad. So, if you're a member of Ubisoft Club, all of these outfits will be three for you with the release of Underground. It's like smushing two or three or four games together that you love. Don't tell the other teams, I don't know, I have a lot of feelings. They let us do this. But not <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm super stoked about running around Manhattan in uh, trifocal goggles without getting arrested like I typically do. So uh, we've got Underground. We've mm -hmm. got dope new outfits. More? We've got one more expansion to talk to you about today. In it, you'll struggle to find meager supplies in New York and fight to survive Survival. in some of the most brutal weather conditions imaginable. It's a completely new way of playing the game, and you'll be able to play it very soon. Even sooner 
if you're on Xbox One or PC. Ladies and gentlemen, this is survival. Yeah. I got a burp in my chest, not coming up. The blizzard was getting worse. But we had to investigate the rumors of a cure. Damn. dropping we are not alone out here come on man yeah yeah in this world it's hunter against prey survive. Yeah. Uh, so much awesomeness. Now, for Ubisoft, VR is the perfect technology for making gaming more accessible. And Ubisoft Montreal's Funhouse team built a game that just about everyone is going to know how to play the minute they put on their headsets. So here to take us into the world of Eagle Flight, please welcome creative director Shao Huto, along with two huge fans of the game, Paul Merlucky, inventor and founder of Oculus, and Jason Holtman, Whoa. and the publisher of Oculus VR. I am very excited to show you the game today, and even more excited to have you guys to play with us. Thanks for having us. Uh, we're re huge fans of Eagle Flight. It's a very, very intuitive game, and the, uh, the, the flight mechanic is super innovative, and it gives you that real freedom of flying in VR. But most of all, it's just super fun, and by super fun, I mean I can beat Palmer almost every time I play. <laughs> that, 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 that's not true. <laughs> um, but I mean, we've been playing this game for months at Oculus, and we've been getting pretty good at it. And uh, so this is a really good chance for us to come and show everybody that we can beat you guys at your own game. Yeah. Let's see what you've got, Fun Man. Let's, let's play. Let's go. Let's go. Hello, everyone. My name's Carsten Myhill, and I'm going to talk you through, for the first time ever at E3, a live PvP demo in VR. It's called Capture the Prey. And two teams of three will battle it out in the skies over Paris. Over here, we have the blue team resplendent in their Hawaiian shirts, led by Palmer Lucky, Olivier, and Vicky. And the red team, led by Jason Hawkman, with his two wingmen, Andre and Charlie. The rules are simple. It's a capture the flag game. And we will play best of three. So if we're ready to go, let's fly. So we can see the first location of the prey, right there at the foot of the Eiffel Tower. And they have to take it to the nest to score a point. 
It's a okay. bit like football. They have to work as a team, taking the object and bringing it to a goal. All right, maybe not the greatest analogy in the world, but you get the idea. Teamwork is key to succeeding in this game. Paris has been reclaimed by nature. We can see the Champ de Mar uh, overrun now with uh, beautiful trees and undergrowth and nature and escaped animals from the zoo, like those giraffes over there. Olivier has the rabbit and is making his way over to the nest right now. He's trying to stay low, using shortcuts, weaving in and out of the trees, taking little alleyways and tunnels wherever he can trying to stay out of sight of his opponents who are trying to, t trying to shoot him. Oh, oh, and he's been hit by Andre. And the rabbit is down. Charlie's got it. So the red team in possession. Oh, no. Killed by Vicky. Who's not seeing how they're, they're killed, not far though. From the nest now. And it's Olivier for the blue team. Yeah! There's the nest. Are blue going to score first? Yes, they are. 1 0 to the blue team. Yeah, what well a guy. Okay, remember, it's best of three, so the red team needs to score to stay in the contest. Oh, Mickey with an amazing steal and then flew right into the line of sight of Andre, who took it from her. Into the tunnel. Lots of winds and thermals to get a speed boost. Andre looks like he's got a bit of a free run at the moment. Someone's shooting at him though. Andre staying low. Jason being wingman, backing him up. Over to the Pantheon there. Oh, great kill by Jason on Olivier. Oh, no! But Andre has it for the red team, 1-1! Well done. So don't high-five each other, that's not going to work. Okay, the final location is right there at the top of the Eiffel Tower. Don't ask me how the oh. rabbit got up there. <laughs> it's an extremely exposed position. We'll see them shooting at each other as they head up to try and get that final rabbit to win the game. Yeah! Palmer with a kill, good work. And Andre's down, great shot of Vicky taking him out there. Vicky inside the Eiffel Tower, utilizing the thermals. But Jason with the rabbit gets the final score, no! Vicky with the steal. Okay, we have to chase on to get to that final nest. Not far to go now. Andre with it for the red team. Taken out just at the final moment. And the blue team with the steal right at the end to win the game. Well done, blue team. Uh, Interesting. Sorry, guys, you're going to have to stop now. For those of you here, you can come to the Ubisoft booth and the Oculus booth to try it out yourselves. So we'd love to come and see you down there. Thanks very much. Have a great E3. All right. All right. Thanks to Palmer and Jason, Charlie, and of course the entire dev team. I actually got to play an early version of this game last year here at E3, and I'm not going to lie to you, uh, it was like super alpha, and I peed a little. Like it wasn't even very good, and it was awesome. So this is going to be incredible. I really encourage you to check it out. Eagle, Rift is, uh, Eagle Flight is going to be on Oculus Rift and all the other VR platforms this fall, and it is playable this week at the Ubisoft and Oculus booth, so get down there and, uh, and do it. Now, now that we've seen some flying raptors soaring through abandoned city streets, it's time to ascend a bit higher in elevation. So please welcome Ubisoft Red Storm's David Votipka. At Ubisoft, VR is about more than just technology. It's about creating games that just weren't possible before and exploring new worlds with friends without ever having to leave your living room. It's about fully immersing yourself in these worlds, 
and going places and becoming people and doing things that you otherwise could not do. Today, VR is all about opening up the final frontier. Space. Is Ubisoft going to be making a Star Wars game? Or is they, wait, he said Final Frontier. Are we getting a Star Trek game? Star Trek? Captain's Log. Holy shit! Starship USS Egypt is preparing for her maiden voyage. We've gathered some of the most decorated officers in the Federation to test her limits and to prove her place among Starfleet's finest ships. We're en route to a secret testing facility Wait. and are proceeding to our destination. Is that LeVar Burton is Jordy LaForge? This is amazing! Wow! Absolutely astonishing. When I walked in, I really wasn't sure what I was actually walking this into. This is LeVar Burton! This is very cool. <laughs> if I could have imagined what I would have wanted the Star Trek VR game to be, this is it! This is what we've been waiting for. Oh, yeah. Carl Urban? <laughs> Holy crap, this is amazing. I mean, it's really his breathtaking. That was an extraordinary experience to be fully encompassed uh, in a world. Whoa, not into that. <laughs> you're interacting with each other and you're talking to each other. How'd you arrive, Voyager? I mean, it's, nice, it's I couldn't really tell who it was because cool. she had so the, uh, the goggles yeah. on. Uh, tactical and the engineer routing power and charging warp coils. I'm feeling pressure already. I'm feeling <laughs> nervous now. All right, shields up. Prepare warp. Take us out. Yes, Captain. <laughs> Co-op game playing is not new. I mean, you know, we can play games with our friends, but there's something wow. different about being in a shared virtual environment. Hearing who you're playing with, you can look over and see the person and see them doing their job and talk to them. The team does not succeed unless everybody does their job well. Ship decloaking. Activating shields. Okay, shields up. Shields up. I really did not want to uh, lower the shields. While we were under attack, I was very impressed by uh, LeVar playing that game today. He really had the language of Star Trek down. And they are transporting, Captain. <laughs> it's like, you see, this makes you push the buttons. He is Jordy the Horn. the engineer. <laughs> that doesn't seem good. It's a Klingon. Red alert. Preparing to warp. We're under attack. We have been waiting in anticipation for so long for the technology of virtual reality to catch up with where we imagine we should be and where we all want to go. Line us up for work, please. We have full power. Ensign, as soon as you can get us the hell out of here, I'd be most grateful. This was really incredible. Hull is down to 20%. Come on, y'all. Punch it as soon as you can. Here we go. <laughs> it's your own Star Trek experience in a virtual world where you can hang out with whoever <laughs> you want. And that's a pretty good deal. <gasps> Star Trek VR. Bridge crew. I'll be playing bridge. Yes. This year? Ubisoft is bringing you the first ever Star Trek VR game. As you can see, it's amazing. And you heard it here first, unless, of course, you heard it from the reporter who leaked it on Reddit. You know what you can suck a bag of. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> here is the man who was rocking a VR headset way before VR even existed, Mr. LeVar Burton. Holy shit. Welcome to the sofa I had installed here for precisely this occasion. Thank you so much. Um, so it looks like Ubisoft got some of the old Trek band back together. I mean, like all yeah. of the old yeah. Trek bands yeah. and the new ones yeah. back together. So great. I have two questions uh -huh. for you. First of all, um, I know you have my email, so why no invite? But we'll talk about that after. Uh, and how did the game compare to being on the actual, on the actual Enterprise? So here's the thing, right? We use our imaginations so much, mm -hmm. right, when you're yeah. on the set. You guys know that. 
Um, when you're operating the console, there's, it's really not connected to anything. You, you knew that, right? <laughs> you're breaking all our hearts I know, right I, know, now. I know, I know, I know, I know. But here's the thing. You don't have to imagine in this game. You are existing in a completely rendered environment. You are on the bridge of a starship and you're with your friends. Oh. It's, it's pretty cool. It's so amazing. So uh, what was it like working with that particular crew? All of you having had real enterprise experience. I know I can't let go of the fact that it's, it's not real. Okay, yeah, I know. <laughs> but it feels real. Yeah. I mean, it felt real to us when we were doing it. Look, uh, playing with Carl and Jerry was amazing because you know we have this special bond, that, just like you will with, with your friends when you play. And here's the thing. We really had to work together to accomplish the mission. And what's more Star Trek than that? I mean, you can play as the engineer, or uh, you, can, you can drive the ship, mm -hmm. you can be tactical, or you can be the captain, but no one position is more important than any other. Everybody has to do their level best in order to get the job done, and, and that's at the core of what Star Trek has always been about for me. Right, and what people love about cooperative games. Yeah, play. absolutely. Um, so when you were uh, when you were joining the Forge, you were the engineer, yes. but uh, in the game you got to be the captain, so I what did, did that feel like? Well, <laughs> I told the guys at Red Storm that I was not gonna shave my head um, <laughs> for the privilege, and, uh, and so they said fine. Um, for me, it, was, it took a minute for me to get acclimated because it was weird how I just sort of slipped into Jordy. It was like that skin, I just like put it right back on again. The lingo, the rhythm, the techno babble, it all you know, started back. clicking in, coming back. But I was, I'm used to like responding to an order and not initiating the order. So I had to like, oh yeah, uh, uh, engage. <laughs> 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 That's how we start this thing. So right. um, it, oh. it took a moment, but I, I, I got the hang of it and it's, it's such a blast. I think that they really nailed it. The graphics, everything, it's so beautiful, but you will forget all of that. Right because the gameplay is so engaging. God, it's yeah. so cool. It's well, awesome. I can't wait to play this game, uh, preferably at your house. Yes. Um, well, and you can come over and then we can play. We can play with like Brent and Jonathan Frakes oh, and come Michael on. Dorn. What are you doing right? with my feelings no, 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 right no, no, now? No, no, uh, no. Won't that be cool though? Yes, it yes. would be cool. Yes. I don't want to burst into tears uh, in the middle of this conference, so I'll just cry it out with you after. But thank you so much for talking about my this pleasure. with us today. My and uh, uh, you are dismissed. Uh, but you can't dismiss me unless you outrank me. Uh, it's very clear that I don't outrank you by like many <laughs> levels, so I will just say, make it so, number one. I love you. Oh, I love you too. Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, the bar burn, everybody! Star Trek VR, make it so. Indeed, Aisha Tyler, indeed. imagined ourselves on that bridge and now you get to do it. We're going to have Star Trek Bridge Crew at the Ubisoft booth and of course when it comes out this fall on all major VR systems. Okay. There were no signs. Is this for honor? Without warning. Wait, that's... Picking... Where, where, where do I know that? Why do I know that? I don't know as soon as they came without warning. Oh, it is for honor. Nice. Perhaps 
we had a chance for peace. But desperation and trust are seldom allies. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. The millennium of conflict. Is he going to walk out with his cool pimp cane again? What? I bring war. What? <laughs> He's got the pimp cane. Oh, yes. Desperation drives us to war. It is trust that can end it. Apollyon and her Blackstone legions crave a world where trust is impossible and the wolves among us can roam free. For a second, I thought he said, uh, she said a Praetorian, like I'm a Jason Roman. Vandenberg. I'm the creative director. That's why I was like, what? Last year, I just missed her. Our multiplayer Still. reveal, we gave you the chance to experience our new melee combat system, the art of battle. Now, we welcome you to the world of For Honor. In our campaign, be knighted. Join the Blackstone Legions to drive your enemies from your lands. As a samurai, unite your people to prevent a civil war and restore the prestige of the Empire. And as a Viking, well, I think it's better to just show you, huh? I'd like you to meet... Thanks. I'd like you to meet our game director on For Honor, Roman Campos Oriola. Come on out, Roland. Yes. My brother. Good luck. You are the raider. In the aftermath of war, your people were starving. You brought them back. Now, your fleet sails for the lands of the samurai in seeking plunder and glory. That guy's so awesome. Pimp came on. war had taken us to the edge of extinction. But that raider reminded us of who we are. Raid, but not Apollyon. Not yet. But they knew we were coming.
gates of that fortress hadn't worked for a century. All we had to do was get through them. He's so fucking huge. to the top. One would be enough. This is great. Oh, damn. Fortress is lost. My soldiers slaughtered. Soon I will join them. You open the gate. Now you will pay.
That raider showed us what Viking fury could do. The Great Raid, they would call it. And it had begun. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Jennifer Roman, Jason Vandenberg. If you are looking for something to give that very special someone in your life for honor will be available on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. It's a nice gesture. What could be more romantic than dinner, drinks, and an all-night bender of epic warfare? Either you'll bond forever, or she'll move out in the morning. And if you're in LA, come by the Ubisoft booth for, to play For Honor. Now, for those of you watching at home, head to ForHonorGame.com to register for the very next alpha that will come very soon. All right? I'll do it. Now, here to talk about catapulting of a completely different kind, please welcome producer at Ubisoft Reflections, Pete Young. At Ubisoft, we get to tell all kinds of stories. Like how we can go from a massive AAA game like For Honor to, well, to a wobbly red robot in a small experimental game. Last year, we surprised you and ourselves with Grow Home, the story of our little robot bird learning how to experience the world around him. And today, I'm really excited to announce that Bud is back. It was an okay little indie game. I played it for free, so I can't time, complain. He's not just growing home, he's growing up. In Grow Up, Bud will take his first stumbling steps without the watchful eye of Mom. And you'll get to stretch your acrobatic skills across an entire planetary playground. Not only can you forget your words, <laughs> not only can you ride the giant star plants, but you can throw down seeds and use plants to bounce, shoot, and catapult yourself to new heights all the way to the moon. We want you to help Bud grow up this August on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Thank you, and enjoy E3. Pete, your accent is so adorable, you could forget to say anything at all and just turn those vowels into words way up. There were like 18 A's in that word. You're awesome. Now, at its core, Ubisoft is a creative company with an independent spirit, and support for innovative projects is a part of its DNA. But every once in a while, that DNA mutates slightly, and this happens. Here are the Ubisoft creative director, tag team champions, Hanty. What's going on right now? Can you stand up for a bit? Thank you, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where's Chad? Not you. Out. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Hello. I'm Antti Levesso, the creative director of Trials and also president of Finland. <laughs> <laughs> Trials is pretty great. Is this is like next Hello, part of Trials Evolution. Mike Evans, creative director of the original Blood Dragon and uh, advocate of world peace. Trials and Blood Dragon made baby together. What? That's right, Auntie. And this horrible problem child is being delivered right now. Now. Blood Dragon Trials game? How does that even work? like an 8-bit title to get you excited. Uh, as you can tell, this game is a beast, and in case you didn't get the incredibly subtle messaging in that video, it is out now on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Uh, well, actually, it's almost out now. We didn't want anybody sprinting off to chase Blood Dragons while we were still here on stage, so the game will be released as soon as this conference ends, about 30 minutes from now. Uh, calm yourselves and uh, just take comfort in the fact that apparently LMFAO was back together, guys, so that was nice. All right. <laughs> Guys, I never knew they were white. Guys, this is Ubisoft. And there is, yes it is, my friends. And there is no UBE3 experience without a deep dive into Assassin's Creed. Called it. You know this, and I know this. And this year is special because Assassin's Creed is about to go super multi-platform. Here to talk about the upcoming Assassin's Creed movie, please join me in welcoming legendary movie producer Frank Marshall. Maybe right. you can get me excited about the movie. So, uh, Frank, thank you so much for coming sure. today. Great now, to in case, yeah, we're, I'm excited to have you. In case people don't know, you have worked on some of the hugest films and film franchises that have ever existed in our history. Indiana Jones, Back to the Future, The Bourne Films, Jurassic World. So what drew you specifically to this project? Well, I think, I mean, it's kind of simple. I'm always looking for a good story. And I thought that the Assassin's Creed universe really had all the elements that could make a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of our goal as the filmmakers to take these elements and stay respectful to the franchise and the DNA of the brand and uh, bring something new to the franchise uh, that could be experienced in movie theaters. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a new story. Uh, we have a new hero, dynamic uh, supporting players and characters. So we kind of mixed a little bit of the old up and the, the um, familiar with the new elements. And this is such a, a storied franchise. There is so much to draw from. Uh, I think everybody is super stoked to see that Michael Fassbender is playing in the lead role. Oh, yes. Cast. Yeah, cast. it's an incredible cast all around. I am all right with that for sure. What, what can you tell us about what went into making this film? Well, it's really a, 
kind of a massive production. Um, we shot in uh, three, four different countries. Uh, obviously, there's a, an historical aspect to the story where we go back in time, just like in the game. Uh, but we really wanted to get the right team to put together the movie, and we started with our director, a really esteemed, uh, fantastic director um, named Justin Kurzel. You did uh, Macbeth. Mr. Fassbender on Macbeth. Yeah. And uh, he's really a true visionary who understands the best elements of the game and how to translate them into the movie. Uh, then we assembled a team of really incredibly talented people to uh, surround him with and uh, create the world and, and using these real locations and a team of stunt experts to uh, take us into the uh, parkour and, and the elements that you're going to see in the film. Yeah, I mean, that's such an, uh, such an integral part of this world is the physical aspect of this right, game right. and trying and to replicate a, that in the real world had exactly. to be a challenge. Exactly. We, we've got the best in the world at doing those different kinds of stunts and those, those different kinds of elements. So uh, given all of that, what do you think people are going to be most excited about seeing uh, when they see Assassin's Creed on the big screen? Well, I think there's a lot to look forward to. Um, but really, it's the, uh, the, the multi-layered mythology that we have that comes from the game and the uh, kind of putting you into the story. Uh, we have a real story, and it, and it has an arc that goes all the way to the end. And you're being able to have that same wish fulfillment you have in the game of being able to see the, uh, the world through the lives and the ancestors uh, through the genetic memory that, that our character has. That's incredible. I mean, I think people already imagine themselves in this role. So to kind of write at large and bring people in is an interesting challenge, but obviously uh, a really great opportunity. Now, this is E3, so people are expecting huge reveals. We want secrets. We want dirt. What magical things can you reveal to us I about them? Nothing. Anything, Come on, no. Frank. No, no, no. no actually, um, I'm excited because I can show you a little bit more than anybody here has seen already. Uh, so mm. we're going to have an exclusive video that uh, gives you a sneak peek behind the curtain and shows you everything that went into making this film as well as never be seen fo before footage uh, from the movie. So we're going to roll that video very soon, as soon yeah, as you give are, the yeah, word, as as, right? As soon as I throw to it. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. Uh, Assassin's Creed is going to be in theaters December 21st. Uh, so play a lot of Assassin's Creed before then, so it's all inside of you when you go to see the movie. And now, for your viewing enjoyment, I present uh, Mr. Michael Fassbender. All right. Assassins are fighting for free will, and their main rivals are Templars. The Templars are trying to enhance humankind through science. I think Assassin's Creed has a really deep concept and idea, which is going back into time and having some sort of relationship with the ancestor that's come before you. The overall journey of the film is through the eyes of our protagonist, the Michael Fassbender's playing. You're past. He starts to learn that he comes from a lineage of assassins. He realizes the true history of himself and he creates a kind of revolution. We work in the dark to serve the light. That Animus machine is a lot different than the one in the game. Michael is one of the greatest actors of his generation, and there's many other strong characters in the film. The Assassin's Creed universe is a cinematic experience. The action sequences are massive. I just want it to be an unbelievable ride. We have to show him who he really is.
with 100% less Kanye. I feel exactly the same way. Uh, I think we've all imagined ourselves in that role over the years we've played the game, but I can't think of a better choice than Fassbender. He's super hot. We're looking forward to the assassin getting naked. Um, all right. <laughs> Just me? Okay. Uh, now for, uh, for our next game. Oh, all right, okay. I your freedoms can only be protected if democracy thrives. The corporate interests are rigging the elections. Your elections. Your favorite social media giant, Invite, knows everything about you. And then yep. manipulating your feed to tailor Here we go. Watch Dogs 2. Congressman Mark Russ. Invite wields the single most powerful population control tool ever created. Defend democracy. Help us tear down Invite. Lend us your processing power by downloading our app and together we will expose Congressman Russ. Join us. We are dead sick. Yep, San Francisco, Watch Dogs 2. Hello everyone, and welcome into the San Francisco Bay Area. The birthplace of the tech revolution, and Watch Dogs 2's new playground. This time, you will join DeathSec, a hacker group rebelling against an establishment that uses technology to take away our freedom. You are Marcus Holloway, a brilliant young hacker on a mission to take back control from the establishment. Now we all live in a hyper-connected world. Everything we use and every one of us is connected through technology. From the perspective of a hacker, this world is filled with opportunities. So in Watch Dogs 2, everything around you can be hacked in creative ways. You can also profile, manipulate and act everyone. And you're not alone. You can seamlessly encounter other DeadSec actors. And now, getting into co-op has never been simpler. Oh, hi. But for now, let's deal with Invite, a social media giant that's just been exposed by that set. Our numbers are going through the roof. Us, we just promised them a little open on Invite. And we'll deliver. Have faith, sister. Sure. Most if we can find evidence that Invite's manipulating social media. Oh, yeah. Friends, where you at, man? Scouting Congressman Gibson's apartment from the Ripley store. Okay, people, this is strictly by the book. Don't paint outside the lines and stay frosty. Fuck you. Just get in there and find some rusty nails to crucify for us in the social media cross. On my way. The Bay Area is filled with stories you can choose hmm. to explore. But for now, let's just check what happened. No, I'm when thinking, though, I got down. burned by Watch Dogs 1 and how incredible it looked at that E3. But then I remember whenever it came out, that game just did not live up to the, to the potential. And uh, this one has kind of a... Uh, it kind of has like a, a Sunset Overdrive. Like maybe just a small hint of that. More vibrant colors, you know. See the whole city from here. It's not gray and green and brown. A lot of people. Yeah, getting screwed. You don't even feel it. Just numb. It's fucked up. I know it's gonna be a hell of a fight turning them back into people. Fucking a, man. Okay, dude. You find the evidence, and I'll monitor exit strategy. Hey, 
is that the congressman? Uh, no, I do believe that is a helicopter. <laughs> Fuck you. Marcus, the building just went off the grid. We can't get in or see inside. They're up to something. I'll see what. Drone. They got armed help in there. Something's definitely up. Scrubbing the evidence. Get us access, Marcus, before it all gets wiped. I'll get you inside the system. Once I do, you use the botnet to brute force your way in and download everything you can. But once you start downloading, they'll know you're inside. It wouldn't be a party if they didn't. And I've got a surprise for them. Where are we on wiping the Congressman Cloud? That's done, but there's a team that invites scrubbing the backups, too. They're good at this. They're the best computer forensics team we have. You pay top dollar, you get top talent. That's what I want to hear. Rich, you ready for my exit strategy? Uh, divine ready. That sounded like, uh... Charlie Cox. Tara, I'm ready to go in. Play me something fresh. <laughs> Warning. I'm gonna... I'm gonna give this game the benefit of the, ba of the doubt so far and say that there's a really good chance that it's gonna be better than Watch Dogs 1. So, yeah, just fingers crossed that it actually lives up to that potential. There's something over there. car I like that fall right there. That was pretty great. You're in a line of fire. Take cover. Your insanity is already. Oh man, you're gonna love it. Oh, 
Hmm. That's pretty great. comes out on November 15th, 2016 on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. It's so cool to see my hometown in that game. And uh, much like you, whenever I'm infiltrating a corrupt politician's penthouse, I also listen to Eric B. and Rakim. And now, I'd like to welcome Ubisoft CEO Eve Guillermo to tell you a little bit more about Watch Dogs. Yeah, we haven't seen Eve yet. everyone, thank you for being with us today. So as you may remember, when we launched the first time uh, Watch Dogs with the PS4, it was a major success. And that was really thanks to Sony and the push they did uh, have on this, uh, on this game. So today, I'm very happy to, to tell you that uh, we are going to continue with Sony and we are going to do Watch Dogs 2 with them. So I would like to, um, to ask uh, Tim um, from Sony to come with us and tell you more about it. <laughs> Thank you. They're twins. Thank you, Tim. Hello, Tim. Welcome, welcome. Thanks, Eve. That's right. We've been really impressed by Watch Dogs ever since Ubisoft first showed the game right here back in 2012. I think you were, I you were there well. that night. Sony and Ubisoft partnered on that game in the early days of the PlayStation 4. And then our partnership went even further. A while back, Sony Pictures Entertainment signed up with Ubisoft Motion Pictures to produce a, a Watch Dogs feature film with new Regency Productions. After what is shaping up to be an amazing Assassin's Creed film, we think Watch Dogs is set to be the next video game based Blockbuster movie. Yeah, it's an incredibly filmic game. Yeah, it looks so cool. And, you know, as you know, Jim, it's, it's never too early to think about who your lead uh, actor is going to be. So uh, I'm looking at the character and I'm thinking Michael B. Jordan or a Tay Diggs or an Aisha Tyler who is tall and yeah. black and slightly masculine. That's what I'm thinking, you yeah. know, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We yeah, can so talk about it backstage. I'll yeah. be waiting. <laughs> um, now, I understand you also brought something very special to share with our PlayStation players out there, right? That's right. PlayStation owners will have access to all Watch Dogs 2 DLCs 30 days before they're released on any other platform. Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. Well, sir. Right that's a killer deal for the PlayStation Nation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. And now we're going to take one more look at the wild hacker playground that is Watch Dogs 2. <laughs> Ah, the San Francisco Bay. I don't think the VW vans have computers you can hack into. Oh, 
Literally the most fit hacker in the world. Uh, and of course, what's a game about hackers without a few good robots? So if you pre-order the limited edition of Watch Dogs 2, you'll get your very own Wrench Jr., a hack security robot from the game. Uh, it's probably not going to help you oust a corrupt uh, corporate overlord with a stranglehold on your city, but it is radio controlled and so quite useful for annoying your coworkers and ending unwanted relationships. <laughs> All right, folks. We have one more game to show you today, and we all know that Eve likes to be the one to announce the next big thing, so I'll let him take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, Eve Yimo. All right. What's this going to be? Is it going to be... Uh, let's see. Uh... So I'm excited to tell you about our new IP. It's from a new our IP. studio in the French house. So the studio has a lot of multiplayer expertise. You know, those guys have done Splinter Cell multiplayer. They have done also Assassin's Creed multiplayer, and they worked on the division on some part of the game. So for the first time, we are combining the thrill of action sports with a fully explorable open world. So this game will give you a chance to challenge your friends and to share your adventures with the community. It's a completely new genre, and I am sure you will love it. Thank you. He's so likable. All right, what do we got? It's that moment where I've committed to leaving, but I haven't left the earth yet. Nothing you can do but charge forward. What I love the most in the mountains is that I can do anything I want. It's pure freedom. You know, there's always a bit of fear. If you don't have a little fear, you know, then you're a little crazy, I think. <laughs> Nothing else matters up here. All the chaos is just gone. No one else around. The moment my feet leave the earth, everything else disappears. It's pure adrenaline. Nobody but me. It's what I live for. What was the name of that snowboarding the game? Your canvas, you know, you can paint your own picture. That's what the beauty of it is. The most important thing for me is to try something that never been done before. Am I scared? Sure. But fear can be a tool. It can keep you performing beyond what you think your limits are. What is this, like, downhill? Is that what it's going to be called? Or just down? Gravity. Steep, yeah. <laughs> that looks cool. I don't know if I'd ever snowboard, I'd just stick with a squirrel suit. We are from Ubisoft Dancy at the base of the Alps, just a few miles from the tallest peak in Europe, Le Mont Blanc. From our studio windows, we are surrounded by the mountains, and they have inspired us to develop the game that we are here to show you today. Up in these mountains, sport isn't always about winning. Sometimes it's just about doing awesome things with your friends and living life to the fullest. And sometimes it's just about capturing those memorable moments and sharing them with your friends. Let's show some gameplay. Take it away, Igor. Thank you.
That is pretty. Welcome to the world of Steep, a massive open world partially set in the Alps at the intersection of Italy, Austria, Switzerland, and France. We're currently flying over Aiguille du Mont Blanc, and in case you're wondering, Aiguille means needles. First thing we'll do is land on a small rock over there. Oh. Notice a man on the right. Come on, stream, you can do it. We're almost done. Walking up to the. That's another player from the community. From here, we can now enjoy the view and observe the world around us. The big guy in front of you is the Mont Blanc, the biggest summit in the region. And in the distance, you can see the Matterhorn, one of the wildest spots in the game. And on the right, you've got the Arabic Matterhorn, Church, the region we come from, where Ubisoft ANSI stands. In Steep, we developed a really cool observation tool. We call it Mountain View. Mountain View allows you to zoom out from your position, observe the world, and navigate into the environment. Our mountain range will be populated by drop zones. Drop zones are entry points for you to drop in the world when you're ready. Now, let's get back to our initial position. Besides drop zones, the game will offer a wide range of challenges for you to test your skills. The one in front of us is a wingsuit activity. And as the other player drops in, we'll follow him and trigger the challenge. This is a proximity flying race challenge. Thread that needle. No! Oh, he's dead. We just secured the silver medal, and as we land, we could choose. We could choose to move. Uh, onto skiing in the Aiguille. But we'd like to introduce you to another region. So let's switch to Mountain View and head over to Aravis. The purpose of this next sequence is to show you what it's like to play online with your friends or with other players from the community. As you ride, you will keep meeting other players from the community having fun in the mountain. Let's switch our point of view to follow those riders. As you noticed, the game will support GoPro views. Nah, I don't like that view. here too much at the same time now i'd like to show you something special if we go back to mountain view take a look at that trail every line you do in the world creates a trail and that trail is really cool it not only allows you to check what you've done on your ride so you can analyze your line but it also allows you to launch a replay of what you've seen and what you've done You can rewind, pause, control the camera, go slow-mo. 
That's cool. And follow any players you've met. And the idea here is to allow you to push that replay of your performances. Or just crashes to all social networks so you can share it with the world. Even better, not only can you share videos that say you liked that jump over the cliff, you know it's a tricky one. You can push it as a challenge to your friends, you define the rule, share it so it becomes part of the content your friends will see in their game. But let's catch up with our red paraglider. Hope you're dead. Yep, you're dead. <laughs> There is one last thing I'd love to show you. Steep is definitely about sharing intense, thrilling, crazy, or just pure fun moments. And it's also about enjoying the mountains. It is a beautiful game, I will give it that. This is a great song too. the mountain as soon as tomorrow. Steep will be fully playable on the show floor. If you're watching from home, please visit steepgame.com to register for a chance to participate in steep beta phases. This game ships this December. Wow. Thank you very much. Very nice. All right, guys. We got a lot done today, and we are barreling towards the finish line. But before we go, we want to bring Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillemot and the, all of the teams behind the games that we had on stage during our show back out here one more time. Come on out, everybody. This is going to be like the end of Saturday Night Live, only all the game devs have not been drinking for hours. Mm. Although I'm sure they'll start very soon. Welcome, Yves. As you could see, you know, that was fantas a fantastic game. And I think it's just the beginning, because as you know, this game will be live for a long time. So those guys are going to give you a lot more. Mm -hmm. So I would like to thank you, all Ubisoft teams, and Aisha, <laughs> um, wow. I, for their creativity and uh, all the passion they have. Um, I would like also to thank you, all the gamers, we are only here because of you. We really love you guys, because you always push us for excellence. As Aisha said, this year Ubisoft celebrates our 30 years birthday. That means 30 years in the best industry in the world. Congratulations, you know, that is really cool. 30 years. video games because the real innovation and magic happens when our teams and players are free to create, free to innovate, free to express themselves, free to take risks and have fun. That's what got us here today 
and that is what will drive us for another 30 years and beyond. Because when you are free, there is no failure. There is only forward. See what we got here. Far Cry Primal. So this is just like the ending montage. So, all right. While this is going on, I can start talking about what I thought of the conference. So, a uh, big takeaway for me, honestly, the best thing I saw was uh, South Park: The Fractured Butthole. That's going to be the game I immediately look forward to from Ubisoft. Um, what else did we see? Uh, obviously, Watch Dogs 2 was a big one that they really want us to focus on. That was really intense. I'm not really into the Division, so whenever they did Division expansion and stuff oh, like that... Shit, we got the wrong game. <laughs> Oh, I hate those guys. I'm so glad they weren't at the conference this year. For Honor is another huge one that I am super stoked for. That will definitely be a game that I will be buying. Maybe besides South Park, though, the one I'm the most excited for has to be Trials of Blood Dragon. I mean, it's just... It's everything I really want in a video game, so... Yeah, I thought that we were going to see... Uh, possibly... A tease for the new Assassin's Creed game that was coming next year. I guess they're just not even going to worry about it. They're focusing more on the movie this year. Um, another big thing that I really was digging was Ghost Recon Wildlands. So that looks like it's it. Turn it back to Aisha, listen to her real quick, and then we'll finish up. your burning questions about Ubisoft and our conference today. Everybody, you've been so awesome. I'm Aisha Tyler. We are Ubisoft. Happy 30th birthday, Ubi, and you guys, you know what to do. Come on down, meet us on the floor, and do that shit! Shit. Do that shit. She does, she does say that at the every single one, doesn't she? Okie dokie. So, pros... I do, I'm like one of the few people, I guess. I guess, I like Aisha Tyler as the host of Ubisoft's conference. Uh, I think she does a great job. So, like I said, the big takeaway for me was South Park the Fractured Butthole. It looks like it's going to be a hell of fun ride. Then, of course, uh, uh, Wildlands. That's going to be such an amazing game. I just, I'm going to be there for... I'm going to, that just... So, like, such an expansive world, even though, you know, it's just Bolivia, that co that co-op is going to be so fun, and I can't wait to dive into that, because I normally do like Tom Clancy properties, whether, whether it be Splinter Cell, Rainbow Six, Ghost Recon, I did not like The Division, so I'm excited to get back into this and just love a, a Ghost Recon, or love a Tom Clancy game again. Um, something that fucking blew me away and I did not see, see coming was the VR Star Trek game featuring LeVar Burton. And, uh, yeah, whenever they said, uh, The Final Frontier, I was like, oh, they're talking about space, maybe they're making Star Wars. And then I thought, wait, it's Star Wars, or Star Trek, The Final Frontier, that's, yeah, it's Star Trek. And then I'm like, it dawned on me, this is really gonna happen. Um... Oh, that uh, Eagle VR game? It looks pretty interesting. Maybe it's uh, just on the brink of what VR will be capable of doing. So who knows? Maybe that could be a really interesting uh, game to check out if you do have VR. They talked about the Assassin's Creed movie a little bit. I'm, you know, it, I'm, it's obvious they had to talk about it a little bit. But uh, yeah, overall, I would give this conference a B, maybe a B plus. Um, there were a few instances where I was like, oh, okay, uh, you didn't blow me in a way with anything new and exciting. They ended last year's conference with Ghost Recon, which was, like, amazing. This year they ended with the game Steep. 
I don't think I'll be getting steep. For me personally, it doesn't interest me. I could see for some people who do, do like the snowboarding and the squirrel suit, stuff like that. It's funny whenever they crashed and they hit stuff. Yeah, but for spending like $60 on a game like that, I don't think that I could be doing that. But uh, for all the people out there who do, yeah, go for it. Watch Dogs. I don't think I'll be getting Watch Dogs either. Um, it's not that I got burned from the first one. It's just uh, it kind of looks and feels like what you would see from a Ubisoft game. So when I think Ubisoft, I want them to do something new and incredible. Kind of like that what they did with uh, South Park Stick of Truth. I'm definitely going to be buying a uh, fractured butthole. Day one, like I said, I've said it a thousand times, I don't want to play that game so much because Stick of Truth was such an incredible ride. So post your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this Ubisoft conference and what you were the most excited for. If you disagree with me on anything, whether you think that Steep is going to be incredible or whether I'm wrong about Watch Dogs 2 and that's going to be the best game ever and that I should give it a chance, let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, thank you so much. If you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button right there. And if you check up in the top right corner here, you're going to see a little card icon. That'll take you over to the Flick Freak store where we have t-shirts, coffee mugs, phone, tablet cases, all the great paraphernalia you could ever ask for. If you feel like donating to the channel, we have fan funding as well as this Patreon campaign here. And we'll catch you in the next video. Until next time at the Sony conference. Godspeed to 100,000 subscribers. Where's Sterling? Oh, he seems to be crawling away from the goal. What is he doing? He's throwing away the best! <laughs> 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 <laughs>